All right, so this whole time we've been focusing on memory. How do we memorize? How do we get information into the brain? Uh, so for this last subunit, uh, 9.4, we're going to be focusing on forgetting and the formation of false memories. Hey, guys, which one of these pennies is the best representation of what an actual penny looks like? What do you think? All right, we've talked about Urban Eb Herman Ebbinghaus before with his serial position effect and the spacing effect. Now we're going to talk about Herman Ebbinghaus's concepts of, of forgetting. And this one is called the forgetting curve. Here, I'll underline it for you because I didn't in the PowerPoint. So forgetting curve. Herman Ebbinghaus, Herman Ebbinghaus learned a list of nonsense syllables as we learned um, last week. After he learned these syllables, he studied how much he retained up to 30 days later. And he found that... Uh, the more he studied, the less he forgot, okay? So if he never revisited anything, um, then he would forget a lot, just as we saw in the, when we talked about cramming. All right, so notice how loss is forgotten after each review. Look how much loss is forgotten after each and every review, and look how much is retained at those later reviews, okay? So if we use the spacing effect, less information is forgotten. If we don't use the spacing effect, more information is forgotten. And that is essentially the essence of the forgetting curve. So to sum up, Herman Ebbinghaus found that memories fade quickly for novel or new information, but it levels off. As we saw in the previous uh, PowerPoint, as we saw uh, uh, on, the, on the spacing effect, within one day of cramming, you typically lose 50% of the information, uh, but Eventually, the forgetting levels off around day five or six. This is why the spacing effect is required to prevent this. So sometimes uh, new memories can block the recall of old, of old memories. And old memories can block the retention of new memories and can lead to forgetting. It can lead to forgetting of com uh, completely forgetting of certain pieces of information or it can lead to really awkward moments uh, that you might have with loved ones. So for example, the two types of interference with our memory is retroactive and proactive. Retroactive interference is when new information blocks out old information. So all the retro stuff, the old stuff, is blocked by new information. So for example, you get a new bus number and forget your old bus number. Okay? Or you get a new schedule for a new year, uh, for a new school year. And so you uh, remember uh, the route that you need to take to get to all your new classes, and you forget your old uh, routine of going to each class. That's retroactive interference. Proactive interference is when old information blocks out new information. Okay? Um, proactive. So pro, the, the new information is being blocked. All right, so if you might go talk to your girlfriend and you accidentally call her by your previous girlfriend's name, whew, that's going to be rough, okay? Um, or if, you're, if your girlfriend gets a new phone number and you forget it because you've memorized your girlfriend's old number, um, that would be tough as well. Now, you guys don't have to memorize phone numbers because you have cell phones, but I, I still have my girlfriend's cell phone number memorized um, from middle school. So think about that. All right. Um, there's also a – now these have all been uh, more neurological and cognitive theories of memory. Now this theory of repression is a psychoanalytic theory of memory as developed by Sigmund Freud. So you know that there's not a lot of validity to this. <laughs> but we have to talk about it anyway. So in the psychoanalytic theory – the basic, it's a defense mechanism that um, banishes anxiety arousing thoughts and feelings and memories from consciousness. So, for example, uh, if, you, if, if someone has experienced the loss of a loved one or if someone has experienced a really traumatic event, their brain um, will prevent that person from retrieving those memories because it can lead to uh, neurosis, it can lead to psychological damage. And so the brain will not allow the person to retrieve those memories as a self-defense mechanism. I know certain individuals who have lost children, which is something that should never happen. Um, 
uh, a, a parent should never have to bury a child. And because of that extreme, unfortunate circumstance, um, the parent has forgotten certain things about the child, like their birthday or the day of the, the passing or, or things like that. And this is all uh, subconscious repression. This is our brain forcing these memories out of our, out of our mind. Um, and I don't know, there could be some validity to this one. And then there's the misinformation effect. This, these can lead to the development of false memories. This is incorporating misleading information into one's memory of events. So when you're, when you're at a family reunion or you're on a family vacation and your parents are like, hey, remember when you were five and you, and you uh, ate all that ice cream and you got ice cream all over your face and then you went and gave Cinderella a kiss and you got ice cream all over Cinderella. Oh, remember that? Wasn't that such a fun, fun family memory? And then you're like, yeah, that was fun. I did do that. Yeah, yeah blah, 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 blah. You don't actually remember that, right? But you remember the story. And you can create a imagery of the story in your head so that it almost becomes real to you. And it does become real over time through rehearsal of the story. Maybe you might repeat the story to your friends or something like that. And so this is, the, this is how the misinformation effect can lead to the development of false memories. All right, there are two types of amnesia. Uh, and first of all, what is amnesia? Amnesia is the loss of memory caused by brain, da brain damage, disease, or psychological trauma, such as what we talked about uh, with repression. Um, there are two types of amnesia. There's antegrade amnesia, which is the inability to create new memories. So every day, you're meeting someone new. You might have gone to class with uh, a buddy of yours every day this year, but because of antegrade amnesia, you have to introduce yourself to them every day because you can't remember them. Um, or it would be really difficult for you to create... Uh, uh, neural networks for new psychological concepts because of antegrade amnesia. You would not be able to recall those concepts because it's new to you. Whereas retrograde amnesia is the more stereotypical form of amnesia that we think about when we think about amnesia. And this is the inability to recall past memories. So the inability to recall uh, certain, I don't know, maybe family reunions, birthdays, significant past events in your life. Um, or just years. You might forget whole chunks of your life. For example, when I was a kid, when I think I was on a freshman in high school, I, uh, I got in a concussion. I had a concussion. I still don't know what the cause was. We don't know. Um, I'll tell you the story in class. But I got a concussion. And once they took me to the hospital, I kept telling them that I needed to get back to Miss Gordon's class so I could finish my science project. The only problem was I was a freshman in high school, and Miss Gordon was my sixth grade science teacher. Whoa! So yeah, that that freaked my parents out quite quite uh, pretty bad. Um, but fortunately, I came around and uh, recovered my memories. At least I think I did. <laughs> um, but that's an example of retrograde amnesia. And then there's source amnesia, and this is attributing to the wrong source an event that we have experienced, heard about, or imagined. Source amnesia, along with misinformation effect, is at the heart of many false memories. All right, and then there are seven more concepts uh, on how our memory fails us, as developed by Daniel Schachter, and we're going to be focusing on these primarily in class. Okay, so uh, come to class prepared. See you guys then. Bye-bye.